Wow, are we in for a treat today. Today's guest joins us all the way from the North Pole. Fresh out of the workshop, he's left the elves to tend to all of the last minute details. This is a very busy time of year for our guest today. He and the missus are working nonstop so that the elves and Santa and Mrs. Claus can make this a magical time of year. Tune in today to learn about the business end of being Santa. Imagine a global entrepreneur successful from a small, tiny destination at the top of the world. Tune in as we interview our guest today. And here he is, the man himself. Welcome, Santa. It's oh, so oh, wonderful oh, to have oh, you here. I well, can't believe you had time to make make time to be here with us today in good old Saskatchewan. I always have time for Saskatchewan. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. Merry uh, Christmas. Mark. Merry Christmas to you, Santa. So, Santa, have you ever had a letter like mine that asked for an interview? Well, there was one time I got one from your premier not too long ago. Oh, and, what did Premier Mo have to say? Well, based on what he was asking for, I had to make him, Mrs. Claus made him a stocking. Oh, 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 and, oh. And, and I need to drop it off later. <laughs> no 24 wonder. Days, 23 days, I'm going to have to drop this off and I'm going to have to fill it up with something. Yeah, I wonder what Premier Mo might have in his stocking this year. <laughs> well, Santa, is it pretty common, though, to have some politicians on your uh, naughty list? Yeah, I always get some politicians. You know, this year, it's been a crazy year. There's been some craziness going all over the globe. And we've kind of just sat back and... You know, we want to be kind to everyone at Christmas. Of we know course. It's a tough time for everybody, including the politicians who are doing their dangest best, <laughs> some better than others. Yeah. To get yep. us through this crazy time we're all living in. I am so glad that my business is at the North Pole and we don't have very many visitors. One or two scientists I ever come poking around every once in a while, but yeah, yeah, we're, they we're need pretty, to. We're pretty well hidden, so they're never finding us. So, Santa, does the North Pole have COVID? Nope, we have no COVID at the North Pole. Good. We've been, even though we have no cases at the North Pole, we're social distancing, we're wearing masks. We've got rapid tests that we don't have to pay for. Oh, good. We take it seriously because, you know, me and my helpers, we've got to go all around the world in 23 days. So we need to be very careful with what we do and we're not going to wait. We want to be proactive and do what's right for our business because as a small business with a global reach, We've got to make sure that we can deliver. Absolutely. So that's interesting, Santa. COVID hasn't made it up there. You know, I've heard some concerns from folks down here that what if Santa turns out to be a super spreader? But if you don't have COVID, we would just worry about the reindeers catching COVID then. Well, we're worried about being a super spreader because as you guys know, we have to go to every little boy and girl's house and that's a lot. So we don't want to catch it and we don't want to spread it. We that's make sure that we're doing the right thing all the time. So Santa, is your magic going to protect you on Christmas so you can still eat all those cookies and oranges? Well, I really do look forward to Christmas because of all of that food that everyone leaves out for me. I spend 12 months of the year in our gym we haven't <laughs> closed our gym at the north pole because we're covid friendly yeah and we make sure that we're being safe 
So our gym can stay open because Lord knows I need 12 months of exercise just for the one night of the year where I have to eat everything that those boys and girls are leaving out for me. And I wouldn't miss that for anything. Good for you, Santa. I was noticing that you looked pretty trim. So it must be that Christmas night, all those goodies that you have, that just adds up instantly for you, I'm guessing. Well, between Christmas Eve night and Mrs. Claus doing what she does the rest of the time, I eat pretty good. So I need to have a good exercise plan. And part of that is a spray of uh, disinfectant on every piece of equipment that I go to because me, between me and the elves, we're all running around trying to do our thing because we got to get in shape and stay in shape because that one day of the year is crazy busy for us. Yeah, I bet it is. Absolutely. So what's Mrs. Claus been up to? What keeps her busy the other, you know, 11 months and 30 days of the year? Well, I, I need to tell you guys a little secret because this is the secret life of entrepreneurs, is it not? That's right. These All are right. secrets, Santa. So if I tell you a secret, you got to keep it a secret. Well, it'll only be, you know, you, me, and our audience. No one else will know. Okay. Well, Mrs. Claus, she's busy all the time because sometimes we're not good listeners and we need someone to keep us in, in line. So oh. Mrs. Claus, you know, she makes us tremendous, tremendous food. We eat wonderfully. Mrs. Claus and we're helping her in the kitchen because she's the boss of the house. Santa's Wonderland is really Mrs. Claus's Wonderland. She's the one who designed it. She's the one who keeps it up. I get all the credit for some reason, but <laughs> Mrs. Claus really is the brains behind our operation. She's lo the logistics planner. She tells us when we got to go, where we start, when we got to finish. She's got the timer on. She's got the COVID hand sanitizers all over the place. She is really the one doing the really hard work. For some strange reason, I get all the credit. Now, I don't mind that, and Mrs. <laughs> Claus doesn't mind that either, because she likes staying behind the scenes. Yep. But it would, it would not be uh, cool for dear old St. Nick to take all the credit when I know and everyone else knows, especially Mrs. Claus, and she's just over there, she's watching me, <laughs> that she gets the credit. Well, you know, that must be quite the operation that happens then. Hey, Santa, because you've got all these boys and girls and all these letters, so Mrs. Claus is the one who's letting you know who gets what, who's not getting something this year, and gosh, I hope your naughty list is nice and short. But so she's the one teeing all that up for you. She lets you know if you're running behind on your run. She's keeping track of all that. Does she also keep track of how much time you're going to have to spend in the gym after that night of running around? Mrs. Claus lets me, when I get home on Christmas Eve morning or e e evening, after I've delivered all of the presents, she lets me have a good day or two of rest before she gets me back to the gym. And she's the one who's prodded me always to get back to the gym and stay in shape because for that one night of the year, it takes a lot to prepare. And part of that pre preparation is physical and mental preparation and being mentally ready for the task at hand. And mental health at the North Pole is very important. Absolutely. For yep. me and the missus and all of our little elf friends. Yep, absolutely. So what do you do to mentally prepare for that night? Do you do yoga, meditation? How do you prepare? Well, I did try some yoga one time, but, you know, a couple of stretches here and a couple of stretches there and a couple of cracks and pops and that yoga just didn't work out for me that good. I wasn't too stretchy. <laughs> To be yoga, to become a yoga master. So, okay. So really, what I do is I do a lot of walking. I do a lot of talking. I lift <laughs> my, you know, have to lift my hand up and would eat Mrs. Claus's food all the time, and that takes a lot of effort too. Yeah. I've been running around with the kids all the time. 
our elves are crazy busy and they always are looking for extra hands to, uh, to help them with their projects. Some of them are in school, so we do help them too. Of course. Uh, there's never a dull moment at the North Pole. We're always going. And, you know, this year is just a little bit different because of what's going on with COVID around the world. So, you know, that has really created some extra anxieties for our, our business and what mm -hmm. we have to do. You know, and thank God that one of the things we did this, this past year as COVID uh, started to materialize is we had to switch everything to online. Ah. So all, of, all of our online letters all from the kids across the world, we've had to get them all via email this year because we didn't want paper mail coming in mm -hmm. uh, because we didn't want kids and mail people to have to cut touch all of the envelopes. And we didn't want our workers to have to open and touch all the envelopes. So we've really encouraged everyone to go online this year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were very fortunate. We found this program that helped train us on our online and how to be a lot better online. It was called the Get Found. And you'd be shocked that we at the North Pole needed to get found. But we needed everyone to realize that it's a different time and and we needed to our business and our our clients, our customers, all the boys and girls across the globe to find us online. So we took, we sent some of our folks to the training and it was by golly, pretty good training. And we figured out <laughs> that, you know, we had to do some things different with our website, our North Pole website, so that mm -hmm. everyone could find it. We didn't know what metadata was and all of a sudden we're experts in this metadata and our website is found all the time. It's just crazy busy now. Holy, so Santa, does that mean that you're getting even more letters this year from, or emails from boys and girls? Our inbox is flying every morning. We got thousands, hundreds of thousands of new emails wow. daily and it doesn't stop. So we've really had to streamline how we process all of this because it's not by hand anymore, mm -hmm. uh, but it's very, it's working very good. Our folks are really trained up and they're enjoying what they're doing. We're getting found. The boys and girls are finding us. Excellent, uh, our, Santa. I think we're gaining customers now that they know where we are mm -hmm. online. And they can come and visit us online. And it's it's really comforting to know that as a as a global enterprise, but a small business, we're a local business to the North Pole. But it's absolutely everyone across the globe can find us and find out what we do. Well, and you know, Santa, I'd have to guess that there's very few people who didn't already know what you did, but you're right. It's so important that everyone can find you. Absolutely. Santa, is the naughty list, naughty list looking longer or shorter this year? Oh, that naughty list. We never really take, keep track of the naughty list because it's not our favorite list. For, and, and you and your audience can understand that if you're on the naughty list, you really need to work hard to get on the other list. That nice, yes. That's our favorite list is the nice list. But we do have some that are on the naughty list, as I already showed you. Yep. We have one right in Saskatchewan that's on the naughty list right now. We're hoping, yep. we're very much hoping that he's going to do the right thing. And, he, and if he does the right things, he will get on that nice list. Just like everyone else, they get a second chance, but you gotta do the right thing. Absolutely, yep, one I of, agree one, with you. One of the people on our naughty list was President Trump. Now, we didn't have to do anything there. The American people took care of that na naughty list one for us. Ah. So, we're thankful because we were hoping we didn't have to do anything because we didn't want him to tweet about us. <laughs> do you, hey, are, are you on Twitter, Santa? Well, we are, but we don't publicize our Twitter address and we don't use it unless we have to. Oh, so, okay. Twitter, tweeting isn't something that Santa or the elves do. Now, Mrs. Claus does a little bit of tweeting. I don't. Got it. So tech's not really your thing then, Santa. Well, we're getting a lot more comfortable with technology after we took this get found on Google program. 
Ah. It really makes us comfortable with knowing what we didn't know before. Got it. Now, we yeah. do have some brainiac elves that were all over this tech stuff. But even though, even they found some benefit to get found on Google, because you know this Google business, if you're not on the top of Google, you you're may as well not exist. That's exactly. Correct. Yep, that's exactly right. So Santa, like I'm guessing after uh, the big Christmas deliver, you probably go on a nice hot holiday every year, but do you get to go this year? Well, I'll, I'm going to have to be say another secret to your audience. Oh, okay. You might not want to see this body on a beach. Now, that's a very fair point. Now, having been on a few beaches, though, Santa, there's a lot of people out there who maybe don't want to be public, but whatever, as long as you're comfortable with yourself, right? Me and the missus, we, we like to you know, take a little cruise after Christmas is over. We'll, you know, take the sleigh out. We'll go on a leisurely cruise around. We go over some of the beaches, but you know, a hot holiday uh, during this COVID season, is probably not a good idea. So we're probably going to take our cruise. We'll, we'll fly around. We'll be socially distanced. We'll, the missus will get to visit some of her family. And, uh, you know, we'll probably end right back up at the North Pole and we'll enjoy family and friends that are there with us in order to be safe, making sure that we're abiding by all of the rules. We have yeah. the rules at the North Pole okay. uh, so that we make sure that we don't, you know, you know, we don't want to infect anyone with this dreaded disease mm -hmm. uh, because it's, uh, we've got some, some, some of our workers, you know, some of our elves are 500 years old, so we don't want them to be exposed to this stuff. Well, that's a good point, Santa. I actually just read the other day that you just celebrated your 1750th birthday. Is that right? Well, who's counting? Ho, 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 ho. Well, now here's something interesting. So is Mrs. Claus still your first wife? The first and the only. Oh, well, good for you. 1,700 years plus? Like, that's that's a strong marriage to be able to stay together that long, stay in shape. Congratulations to you both. Oh, it's amazing that she stayed with me this long. I'll tell you this much. I'm not <laughs> the easiest one to get along with all the time. Oh, Santa, I'm sure you, everybody has their thing, right? I'm sure you do. Now, here's a question that everyone has been asking me when we were getting ready for this interview today. How does he do it all in one night? So how do you and the reindeer and the elves actually get the entire world done in a 24-hour period? Well, Barb, you're asking a very top secret question now. I don't know. Good thing this is the you. secret life of entrepreneurs. I don't know. I don't think I can share that secret with you and your audience. Um, what I can say is it takes a team to make it a success. And I have one of the most tremendous teams helping me, not just on the night of Christmas, but every day of the year to make it a success. And I would be remiss to say that it all happens because of me. It all happens because of them. My team is what makes Christmas a success. 366 days of the year. Excellent. So Santa, just a few more questions before we wrap up. One of my uh, audience members asked me, what country does Santa get the best snacks from? Oh, Santa always likes Germany because the little boys and girls always leave a pint out of <laughs> silver for Santa. And, you know, when you're delivering that many presents, having a pint is of ale from Germany is always wonderful. <laughs> I, when I get over Mexico, I get a very good taco surprise. Ah. Oh, and there's nothing better than chicken balls from China. <laughs> oh. It's so good. Uh, there's no shortage of good food, good drink. As I deliver everything on Christmas, I 
that I've never had, and this is after 1,700 and some deliveries, uh, a bad encounter with food. <laughs> oh, so Santa, your palate is relatively easy to please. And I suspect based on your comments that there'll be a few more pints waiting for you this year. Oh, pints and pierogies. I <laughs> love the pierogies from Yorkton. Oh, the pierogies oh. are wonderful. Excellent. Kate, okay, couple more questions here, here for you, Santa. So that was snacks. Is there any country, when you think about the baking that you get, is there any kind of baking that you really enjoy? Any no, particular cookie? No, although, you know, there's lots of ginger snap cookies. I love ginger snaps. Uh, lots of boys and girls leave me out chocolate chips and oatmeal cookies. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them are even leaving me out some um, cookies that are keto cookies. And I don't know what a keto cookie is, but... They tasted good. Okay, sounds and good. All cookies, all baking taste good because there's usually a big glass of cold ice milk that goes with them. So milk mm -hmm. is wonderful. Uh, there's always the cinnamon buns. <laughs> I know in Regina, there's a wonderful cinnamon bun place just down the street from you, I think there, Barb. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is. Wonderful cinnamon buns at Brood Awakenings. Absolutely. <laughs> so Santa, it doesn't sound like um, it doesn't sound like you have to worry about being hungry for a long time after Christmas night. Then, no, I'm not very hungry for a few days after Christmas Eve uh, night. Uh, Mrs. Claus, you know, after I get home on Christmas in Christmas morning, we we have our celebration that evening and on Christmas Day, so that we <laughs> can celebrate. So I have to save room every time for Mrs. Claus's cabbage rolls, Mrs. Claus's ham and turkey, mm -hmm. Mrs. Claus's mashed potatoes and gravy. Oh, it's it's so filling. I I I I look forward to that day because we've done our job by that time and we start business planning for the next year. Ah, so Santa, you must have a pretty good idea when Christmas ends one year, you must actually have a pretty good idea what kinds of things the boys and girls are already going to be asking for. Well, I get a kick out of these marketers who say that they, the marketers tell the boys and girls what they want. What they don't understand is we actually influence what the marketers are telling the boys and girls because it's what we're planning to do. Ah. So, so we're actually the ones at my workshop. We're very good at marketing and promotion. So we started our planning for next year's toys and the most popular things like the Scott Modal is going to be a next year run on that one. We're ramping up production for the Scott Modal. Got it. This is the last year, for example, of the Trump doll. We're not ah. going to be the Trump doll anymore. Okay. So that's those are two examples of you know toys that are going to be in demand next year. Got it. Well, that's very good to know. So Santa, just as we wrap up here, is there a message that you'd like to share with boys and girls? Any any final words in terms of let's get a few more people on that nice list, or what would you like to wish the boys and girls? Well, I, th I think it's very important that everyone, given the COVID situation that we all have to work through, that it would be very good for boys and girls, moms and dads, aunts and uncles, if we could all take care of each other, wear a mask, social distance, be kind to your neighbors. We need to take care, take care of ourselves so that we can all get this COVID behind us. Mm -hmm. Nobody likes the situation we're in. Absolutely nobody. But the faster we all pull together to get through it, the faster we'll all get back to what we consider normal and we can start doing things the way we want to again. Um, so I think that would be the message. You know, businesses across the, the world are impacted by this. Big ones, small ones, mine, yours. And, and nobody likes the search situation that we're in, but mm -hmm. we've got to get through it together. And the faster we all work together to get through, to do the right things, the faster we'll get through it. 
and we'll stop the hurt that everyone's feeling right now mm -hmm. uh, because businesses need to, to stay in business. My business needs to stay in business. Yours mm -hmm. needs to stay in business, but we Absolutely. need to keep people healthy. Yes. You know what I just heard from you there, Santa, was the importance of team again. And you talked about team being so important to be able to make Christmas a success. And I'm hearing from you that we need to pull together as a city, a province, a country, uh, and a globe in terms of being a team and getting through this together. Right, that's Santa? A, that's exactly right, Barb. We're all yeah. in this together. We're all a bit the big team. And the, and the, the sooner the big team works together, plays by the same set of rules, has the same goal in mind, the sooner we all get through this and the sooner we're back to where we want to get to. Excellent. Well, Santa, I need to wrap us up for today, but thank you so much for being here with me today. It's honestly the best Christmas gift that you've ever given me. So thank you very much. Oh, oh, oh you're so welcome, Barb. Thank you for inviting me to be on your wonderful program now you got to make sure you're keeping all this a secret though right absolutely all right. only our audience will know santa okay so i'm gonna let your husband know and by the way he's a really good fella too <laughs> that okay you Thanks, a santa. little bit extra in your stocking this year excellent i will take that if anyone else listening today would like to be a guest on the show they can email me at barb at googlegirl.ca or even reach out right on our Facebook and Instagram page at Above the Fold CA. Just a reminder, you can even submit questions in advance of our show, just like folks did for Santa here today. I'm your host, Barb McGrath, local business owner and Google Girl. Remember, not just Santa worked hard for his success, so did you. Don't keep it a secret. Bye for now.